Good morning, everybody, and welcome to MarketStream.Live. My name is Joseph Kizik with the Kizik Group, securities offered by MoneyBlock. It's August 3rd, and the trade has begun. We're going to take a look at the overnight action from Asia, and then we're going to jump right in and take a look at what's going on on the open so far in Europe. And taking a look at the Nikkei, Japan, uh, moving to the downside. We still see that the continued strength in the yen their currency has started to weigh on stocks. Specifically, exporters are down. Also, you're seeing that investors have a little bit of a sour taste. As we had mentioned, Prime Minister Abe is going to be shuffling up his cabinet, and investors weren't left very happy. So with the strength in the yen, as you can see here right now, uh, with this pulling down, the yen strength continues. Dollar weakness is also continuing. We're seeing the U.S. dollar trading down about two-tenths of percent this morning. That continues to weigh on stocks and specifically exporting stocks in Japan. I'm going to wait to see if that's going to start to weigh on the Japanese markets. As a matter of fact, taking a look, uh, the ETF that tracks EWJ, the Japanese stocks, is trading up just ever so slightly, up three cents. Um, but we'll watch that uh, throughout the session today in the States. Uh, taking a look at China, uh, down 12 points, so not a huge move overnight. Uh, but there is a ton of geopolitical jibber-jabber going on. Yes, that's the term I used. Um, bottom line is, is you have President Trump and the Trump administration. They're concerned about intellectual property, uh, uh, breaking intellectual property in China. They're also talking, you're hearing the term tariffs come up. Uh, that has a little bit of uncertainty about um, trade going forward in China. And you're starting to see that the um, market is starting to weigh on that. Plus the fact we did see the Caxian Services PMI, that Purchasing Managing Index for the services sector, actually come, came in uh, lower than expectations, came in at 51.5. Now that's still uh, a number that is north of 50, which is forecasting growth, but the expectation was higher around 51.9, 52. Um, the other thing was, was that the People's Bank of China did infuse capital into the system, only about 60 billion yuan. Now, that's far less than what they did, exactly half of what they did the previous day at 120 billion, and which was half of what they had done earlier this week on Monday and late last week at 240 billion. So you're starting to see that they're curtailing their injections of capital. Um, watch FXI. Uh, currently trading down seven cents. This tracks the 30 largest ETFs, or excuse me, uh, large cap stocks in the Chinese markets, FXI trading down pre-market in the U.S. Uh, taking a look at Hong Kong, Hong Kong was down um, almost three-tenths of a percent, uh, good for about 76 points to the downside. Again, you're starting to see that the financial concerns uh, as well as the potential trade concerns are weighing on the market, still above its 20 and 50 day moving average and moving to the upside. But the bears are starting to, uh, short, some sellers are starting to come in, not bears. Sellers are starting to come in after what's been a very impressive run. So, uh, needless to say, we'll watch that very closely. EWH is an ETF you can watch, uh, currently trading flat right now in the pre markets here in the US pre markets. Uh, taking a look finally at India. Now, India, um, Interesting situation there. Energies as well as financials are under pressure. Um, the other thing that you're going to want to watch is, is that this, the um, visa debate um, is starting to heat up here in the States, uh, especially uh, you know, talking about green cards and the specialty visas for specialty workers. They're putting on constraints on getting visas, saying you, know, you have to speak English, you have to have a certain level of education, so on and so forth. Um, this is going to put continued pressure on um, companies like consulting companies in India, like Tata Consulting and Infosys. We saw that they were moving to the downside earlier this week before we started hearing the scuttlebutt out of Washington. Watch that debate very closely. Um, also, uh, the services PMI came out in India far lower than expectations, came in at 45. So you're actually seeing some contraction in potential future growth in the services segment in India. That's starting to uh, look like it might start to weigh on the market in India when it's down 238 points. Um, you can clearly see that now it's challenging potentially its 20-day moving average at uh, 32,089. Watch that very closely. EPI is coming in. That's the Indian ETF. 
Uh, up about two cents. Let's see how that trades for the remainder of this morning. Now, taking a look at the European markets, I want to jump in and take a look at the debt market, specifically the 10 years in Germany, trading up this morning. So prices are up in the German 10-year, the French 10-year, and the British 10-year. Uh, almost two tenths percent on the French and German, and you have the uh, the British 10-year up about four tenths percent. So you're seeing some movement in price. That's basically spelling out some uncertainty. Taking a look at Germany. Now, Germany, you're seeing uh, that the DAX is right now moving to the downside 16. Um, some of the more notable things are Siemens, uh, large cap name, uh, down 3.3%. See how that trades in here in the States also during the day. Uh, poor earnings. And so we're starting to see that that's weighing on the market. You're also seeing that... Um, the banks, like Commerce Bank and Deutsche Bank, they're holding up. Despite the fact that you're seeing that the bonds are moving to the upside um, on price, so yields are coming down, they're holding up. Uh, we'll see if that continues. Uh, you're also seeing the, the names of likes of like Bear and Merck uh, also trading mix. We're going to watch those drug stocks very closely. Uh, EWG is an ETF you can watch. It's trading flat right now in the pre-market here in the States. Uh, taking a look at the French CAC. Um, interesting, CAC's up 29. Uh, most notable reason why is you had BNP and Societe Generale. They're both trading to the upside about 1.2%. So you have the financials moving to the upside. You're also having consumer names. Despite the fact that you had a worse than expected services number out of uh, both China and India, um, bottom line is, is that uh, the consumer names are moving to the upside. Um, also, you're seeing some euro strength that has been continuing not weighing on these sectors anymore they've been lagging uh we'll have to see how this actually shapes up this is some interesting action in france louis vuitton one of the more notable names moving to the upside you can watch ewq that will track the etf will track uh the french uh, markets uh closely as well and then finally taking a look at the uk um, Next came out with earnings up 9.1%. You're also seeing um, uh, Diageo up, but you're seeing financials under pressure. Again, I'm going to watch that action very closely, but uh, the UK is up 64 uh, points. And as we had noted, it's been challenging that 20 and 50 day moving average. So no one's really in control. Well, we're seeing control being taken by the bulls in the UK. Let's see if that continues for the remainder of the session. That will go until 12 uh, uh, Eastern time, 11 central. So that's the action that's going on currently right now from the overnight and currently in the Europe. We're going to see how that action actually impacts here in the States. We're looking at uh, a, a mixed open, uh, to say the least, but basically flat. So we'll see how we're going to go into today's uh, session here in the United States, especially with uh, Tesla coming out with some pretty impressive earnings. Oh, one other note. In Hong Kong, uh, overnight, saw a big move to the downside in Apple supplier AAC Technologies. It was down 2.7%. This is a supplier to the Apples, and we're all waiting for the iPhone 8s. Um, but uh, with that being said, we're going to watch some of these supplier names that trade on these foreign markets. Hong Kong AAC Technologies trading down 2.7%. Let's see if that starts to maybe weigh on the markets a little bit, especially after Apple had some really blowout earnings. All right, folks, that's it for right now. We'll be back later this morning. We'll be talking about everything that's going on in the U.S. markets and set the table for the rest of your trading day. See you later.